The days that we are in now are days of warfare, but warfare because, not because they are bad and uh, terrible days. Warfare because the territories out there are up for the taking. Eh? They are ready for the taking. Glory to God. And the Spirit of God has equipped us. Hallelujah. I said he has equipped us. Glory to God. Eh? I want you to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 eh? from verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3. He says, For though we walk in the flesh, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. You know what he's saying here? He's saying that there is this natural outlook of life. But that natural outlook of life does not hinder us from seeing a supernatural dimension eh? and dealing with things just naturally. Now, in other words, there are certain people because they are so well versed of uh, knowledge, natural knowledge, it becomes a stumbling block for them to see beyond that knowledge. And everything that they interpret and the way they deal with that thing that they are interpreting is all natural. And because of that, they are, they are held up somewhere. They are always in, uh, in transit, so to say. <laughs> you know, God wants to take you somewhere, but the knowledge that you have amassed, that you are well versed with, has made you to see things and to interpret things naturally and therefore deal with those things naturally. You don't know how to deal with those things supernaturally. So that's why he says, for though we walk in the flesh, you see, the thing that I'm trying to unleash here is a thing that is going to get the church be the church, the kingdom be the kingdom that is going to conquer it. Because ultimately, the kingdom is not some religious group lifting up hands. Eh? It is the kingdom marching on and taking territories. Hallelujah. So, a lot of you are going to be unleashed by this and capture territories. Hallelujah. See, for though we walk in the flesh, because you see, <laughs> There's so much to be taken. There's so much that is at stake. So much to be taken. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, mighty through God. Mighty through God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are mighty through what? They are not carnal. How do you think you're going to be the boss of that place? Eh? How do you think you're going to rise up and be the dominating entertainer, politician, businessman and woman? Mighty through God. If which doctors can carry out stuff eh, that can advantage their clients. Eh? And you think the church is just going to remain there just inside worshiping on Sunday? The saints of God, these things are prepared for the saints of God to take over. Because when wicked men are in these places, darkness covers the earth. Hallelujah. So he says, mighty, mighty through God. And what we are going to execute here are weapons that are spiritual, that are going to target territories. And you're going to see territories coming down. Glory to God. I know, you say, I know what I have. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. I know exactly what I have. And even if someone hires the greatest witch doctor on earth, eh? and... Uh, and the devil himself with his seat there and says, okay, now can you please come and <laughs> when some of us are there, we know what we carry. Eh? So he says, mighty, mighty through God. Mighty through God. 
through God. Not carnal, but mighty through God. First go to Exodus chapter 15 from verse 3. Exodus 15 from verse 3 says, The Lord is a man of war. <laughs> you more don't know the Lord. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. He says he's a man of war. You know, some people think it's just there's no peace, be still. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name, meaning the Lord of hosts. Verse 4. Pharaoh's chariots and his host has he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They have sunk into the bottom of the stone as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. Verse 8 is so powerful. Verse 8. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright as a heap. The depth were congealed in the heart of the sea. Do you know what is talking about the Red Sea? Do you know that when I don't know. When, when Moses, the prophet, lifted up his rod towards the Red Sea, some people might have seen eh, some carnal physical action. But in the realm of the spirit, the Lord was sniffing. <laughs> So, you see, you see a move like that and something is taking place in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. And you know what? He just sniffed. And then the, the Red Sea parted. <laughs> now, I want you to know that there is this tremendous, this immense power. Hallelujah. No enemy of yours can stand. I can assure you. No enemy of the kingdom can stand. I can assure you that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? By the breath, he says, of his nostrils. <laughs> you see, what is taking place here is uh, Moses is lifting up a rod. And while he's, because he's doing that, actually not while, because he's doing that, in the realm of the spirit, something is taking place. Something is taking place. Hallelujah. By the breath of his nostrils, it says, the sea is parting. The sea is parting. <laughs> 